Jesus had a problem with the scribes and the Pharisees. You see, the scribes and the Pharisees love money. Let me see your hands, everybody, you love money here. Right, I agree with all that, you love money too. But the scribes and the Pharisees have no real love for money. And Jesus told them something very interesting. Jesus told them, everything that you think is important to you down here is not really important to God. Everything you think is important to you down here is not really that important to God. Now who was he talking about? All the money I have in my back pocket is not really important to God. The 15 cars I have home is not important to God. All the houses I have in Trinidad is not important to God. But from the way I see people starting to talk, it's clearly important to you guys. And this is the point that Jesus was making. What you see as important down here on this earth is not important to God. Now the scribes and Pharisees didn't like what Jesus was saying about this. So they start to move and give him a hand them and say, well, you broke any hour, they are ready to watch to you, right? But Jesus started to tell them this story. Jesus said, now, there was this rich man. The man was very rich. The man was so rich, the man bought up the whole top floor higher and made that his house. The man was so rich, every nice car you could think about, the man had one. The man was so rich, he had a massive yacht. He didn't used to take normal planes like the rest of us. He would go anywhere he wanted to go on his yacht. The man was so rich, the man had a private plane too. The man was so rich, he didn't have to work. You see how normally your parents had to go to work every Monday morning, work whole week and then The man didn't do any of that. All the rich man used to do was get up in the morning, See what these servants made to eat, go and eat, call his friends and hold a big line. That's all he used to do every year. Then, there was a poor man. The man had it real hard. The man used to wash people with screen on his hand in high, waiting to get two dollars to make some money. Then one day he came bouncing and he was paralyzed after that. So now, all his friends used to take him and put him in front of the hand by the rich man. All the poor man wanted was to just get some of the food that was shared in the parties. Now the rich man seen one day, pass him and give him a little something. The second day the rich man seen there still, he passed him and gave him a little something. By the third day, the rich man says he's just stripping this. Or they better stop putting this man in front of my gate, you know. So that is how it went with the rich man. Now one day, the Bible says, so Jesus was telling them that, the rich man died and they had a big funeral for him. They didn't bury him in Old Tunapuna Cemetery. No, he went in Bell Rose. The only nice thing in by Eddie had there, that is where they put the rich man. And everybody came to see that the rich man had died and all of that. Big funeral. They shut up the place in the whole day. Now, when the poor man died, when Lazarus died, nobody was thinking at all. So much so that when he showed for Lazarus, you know, nobody was coming to bury Lazarus. So the state, the government of China and Tobago had to take Lazarus and put him down in some hole somewhere that nobody knew about, right? Then Jesus told them that the rich man went to hell. And Lazarus, who was the poor man, was taken by angels to Abraham. Now in, we listen carefully, right? Now in hell, the rich man saw Lazarus. And he shouted out and said, Lazarus. In fact, Abraham said, Lazarus, tell Lazarus to dip his hand in some water and to put it on my tongue to cool the suffering that I have done here. Abraham looked at him and said, Boy, when he was at earth, he was enjoying himself. Lazarus had things hard. So now Lazarus had been easy and he had to take your pressure. So then the rich man said, Here's something. I have five brothers who. Tell Lazarus, go back and tell them fellas about this place now, so they wouldn't end up here. Abraham told him this is something. They had you know any prophets. Let him listen to that. The rich man said, No. 
take Lazarus and set Lazarus back from the dead and let him talk to them. And then Abraham told him. But if they're not willing to listen to the law and prophets, what made you think if I send Lazarus back to get to listen? They're not going to listen. And that is where Jesus ended the story. Now, first of all, there are a lot of things that are clear for you. Can anybody come back from the dead and talk to him? No. Are you sure about that? Yes. Are they absolutely sure about that? Yes. Some people know, some people yes. Yeah. So they're absolutely sure. Yes. What Jesus was doing in this case was using a story that was customary at the time to teach a point. Let me give you an example. You guys have heard the story about Nancy and the baby. Yes. Wait, wait, what are you going to be in school now? And Nancy and the Tabby was the biggest story when I was your age. Yeah. All right, I'll give you a little snippet of the story, right? So, and Nancy saw a old man one day planted some yam. And Nancy went, now oh, Nancy's a spider, right? And Nancy went and, oh, you know it now? Right, and Nancy went and watched the old man and tell the boy that he's going to plant yam. He had to take that boy with that for some sort of and wrap it up with him and back in the hole. And the old man, they got the whole thing. Right? You go and see that, take it, take out all the yam, boil it, carry it home, get us up, wrap it up nice and plant it back in the night. And as you go into the man feet, take out all the yam and take all, right? And eat all. The next day, when the old man see the old man, they're vexed and say, boy, you're kind of crazy. This is this, I'll go for that and see. So, the old man built a tabby, right? And when an answer see the tabby, we come up the road and see past the tabby, we say, well, good morning. That we didn't have to have Nancy. And Nancy took one lash and he had to stay. Right? Because it's that. So now when Nancy started getting into Nancy started fighting the tabby, you remember he kept it up and Nancy just wrapped up on the tabby. And then the old man passed and hit Nancy some food wood. By the way, that story? So that is the story of Nancy and the tabby, right? Now Jesus was using the same principle here. Jesus took a story that the people who are accustomed to hearing. And he used it to teach them a very important principle. And the very important principle is this. When you are alive, that is the only time you have to make decisions to get to the heaven. Yeah. Right? When you are alive, that is the only time you have to make decisions to get to heaven. Now, in this story, I put a lot of couple points that I don't want to miss. Right? Now, with my first point, I have this text to read for you guys. You listen? Right, so, Ecclesiastes 9, 4 to 6 says this. Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have not further, they have no further reward. And even their name is covered, their love, their hate, and their jealousy have long vanished. Never again will they have part in anything that happens under the sun. So even though the story that Jesus was telling was saying that this is something, the rich man could have talked to Abraham and said, yo, go and talk to my brothers and tell them, yo, don't come down here. That is not the case at all. After you are dead, that's it. Nothing else happens after that, right? No. If I were to give you three million dollars today, what would you do with it? Buy nice stuff like what? Cars, houses, what else? If, you, if I give you three million dollars today, what would you do with it? Yeah.
Buy the stuff for you. What kind of stuff you would buy? A house at top. Nobody in here want a boat? Really fun. Nobody in here want to travel the world? Nobody want? Yes. He would buy, which is why? Right? Yeah. right, five yachts and something about the Titanic. Or he wants to be remodeling the Titanic. Yeah? Right? I would buy exactly what I want. But when we look at the story, right, another point that was coming out in the story was this. Riches, you listening everybody? Riches have the power to separate us from God. Even though we tend to see riches as a blessing from God. The more money we seem to get, the more we seem to think about ourselves. You ever realize that? Yeah, it's the truth. The more money you get, the more you seem to think about yourself. If I had three million dollars, I am telling you the first thing to my mind was not charity. Especially when I consider a house number one point eight million dollars now, I was buying a house. You understand? Then for the rest, I was saying, you know what I let me buy a car. And then after I buy a car, I'm like, Jay, you know this money done real fast. I need more money, right? That's what? Yeah, you would say, I need more money. Now, First Timothy 6.10 says this. The love of money causes all kinds of evil. Some people have left the true faith because they want to get more and more money. But they have caused themselves so much sorrow. Now, moving on to the third point. What people value highly in this life is really of no importance to God. God doesn't care how much houses you have. God doesn't care how much cars you have or how much money you have. All he cares about is how you treat those he sends your way. Right? Now God, and this is, a, this is something that we all have to remember. God has a very special place in his heart for the poor people. You see, he understands that the suffering that people go through is because of sin. God is not indifferent to people's suffering. Now, Matthew 25, 34 to 35 says this. The king will say to the good people on his right, Come, my father has given you his blessing. Come and see the kingdom God has prepared for you since the world was made. I was hungry and he gave me food. I was thirsty and he gave me something to drink. I was alone and away from home and he invited me into your house. I was sick. No, I was in all clothes and he gave me water. I was sick and he cared for me. I was in prison and he visited me. Those are the things that Jesus is really concerned about. Right? My last and final point is this. We listen. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? and loses his own soul. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? I remember that actually as a text of the bill told me when I was small. You know? And it's so pertinent because as you get older, even as you're younger, you can get caught up in so many things and doing so many things for yourself that you forget the people around you. And all you are focused on is getting and getting and getting and getting and getting. But you can reach any point where you get everything, but you lose everything because you're actually not connected with God. Right? Now that brings me to the end of my story. But since I'm everyone was listening very attentively, I'll tell you guys what happened to me in Paul Asli. Right? Everybody hear me, right? We go to listen. So I grew up in Judah, just like everyone here, right? So, I know the text, I know the songs, I knew everything, right? Then I went to CUC. You guys know CUC? You're getting that college? Yes, I'm so glad at this. Yeah, I went to CUC, right? So, I was on that straight trajectory of always being in change schools and that kind of stuff, right? So, fast forward to that, I uh, went to university, finished university, got my job, all that, right? Now, one day, my job sent me to work. I used to work in Santana, but they sent me to work in Chatham, right? So where am I to work? 
Shadaramas. No. It was around the right we all did the sun doing the accident calendar. And after that I decided, you know what, but if I have to go and take the traffic to go back to Dabody, I'm gonna reach home like seven eight to come in that because it was already five o'clock, right? So I decided, you know what, my dear, go and buy something to eat. I mean of course it's all nice. I will get I have no bills, I have no vehicle already, I can go and buy something to eat. I can sit up in a restaurant and have a good meal, right? Right, so I decided I was going to pull us going to find a fancy restaurant, that's what I had. Now when I got to where the restaurant was, I saw a man on the side of the road sleeping, right? I saw a vagrant on the side of the road sleeping. I didn't think anything about it. I just found my van and decided to walk and go and go to the restaurant, right? Then I remember clearly the spirit of the Lord telling me, Damien, give that man $20. And then the like, Lord, were you telling me, $20? And this was a couple of years ago, right? I was like, what do you mean, give man $20, Lord? You know what the money is that? Then the Lord said, Damien, give the man $20. So I decided to not ignore the voice of the Lord. So I went to my wallet and looked to see if I had $20, right? Yes, I had $20. Now I stand up here. The man is sleeping there, and I'm contemplating as to whether I should really give this man $20 for You know? So I said, alright, fine, Lord, I'm listening. I'm give the man $20. Go to the man, the man is soft asleep, right? So now I'm like, Lord, you're ready when we touch his finger and I wake him up. Like, what's going on with you today? You can wake up people from the dead and you can wake up the man on the road. The Lord was like, Damien, yeah, give the man $20. I was like, Lord, what is this? Alright. So now, I bent down, touched the man on the shoulder, and gave him the $20. The man immediately started to cry, right? The man immediately started to cry. And he was like, thank you so much, so like, you don't know how much this means to me and all of that, right? And I felt a feeling that I can't even explain to you guys. Like it's such a beautiful, fulfilling feeling that I was even hungry after. You know, I was just, you just felt as though you were floating. It was such a nice thing to experience. But one point really stood out to me, and it's something I will never forget. So many times, people don't see the hand of God in their lives because we are not willing to listen to God. You guys understand that? You sure you understand that? I'll say it again. So many times, we well, so many times people don't see the hand of God because we are not willing to listen to the voice of God when He speaks to us. Right? If I did not listen, there was I don't know how that man was going to eat. But the other thing is, I don't know if the man was sleeping, praying to God, saying, Listen, something, I need something to eat. Send somebody to give me something to eat. And the truth of the matter is, all of us here are supposed to be that somebody that Jesus can send. Right? Remember, that the entrance to heaven is given in the text which says, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me water. I had no clothes and they gave me clothes to wear. I was in prison and they came and visited me. Those are the people that God is actually going to let into heaven. So if you want to go to heaven, we have to stop being like me and say, Lord, and you only wake up that man with twenty dollars. We have to start to look for people in need and go and attend to their needs because that is exactly what Jesus used to do. When you look at the life story of Jesus, Jesus was always going around doing good, helping somebody. And if we are the representatives of Jesus on this earth, we are supposed to do the same thing. We are not supposed to be indifferent. You know that word, right? We are not supposed to be indifferent to the suffering of our fellow men on this earth. If we are indifferent, then we are not disciples of Jesus. Right? So thank you very much for listening to me today. This brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope you guys learned something from it. Right? And I'll see you next time. Yes. I am so
You said it just like if you are looking at my wife. Just 